2024 was a huge year for Excel updates. We've seen so many new features, but let's be honest, you don't need to know them all. The key is knowing which ones will make a real difference in your day to day. In this video, I'll walk you through the updates that can help you stand out at work. Think of these as your secret tools for 2025. After nearly four decades, Excel finally has updated checkboxes and they're very cool. To demonstrate them, I've created a chores list for my teenage sons to do over the summer break, which is now for us because we're in the Southern Hemisphere. Checkboxes are the perfect tool to keep track of who's done what, so we can avoid any arguments about who did said chore last time. Here's my list of chores. Some of them are a bit ambitious of me, like make bed. I mean, they've got to get out of bed to make it, and that alone is a challenge for a teenager. Now I've already set up two as a legend and color coded them. Next, I need to add them to the chores for each day. So with the cell selected on the insert tab, checkbox. Checkboxes are a cell format and we can further format them with font colors. Let's select Connors. I'll go to the home tab and format these in red and fins are blue. And then I'll select them both and let's just paste them in for the remaining days of the week. To check a box is simple. Use your mouse to select it. If you want to check multiple boxes, select them first and then press the space bar. You can also uncheck boxes in bulk with the space bar, which makes it quick and easy to reset. Now, if we look at a checkbox in the formula bar, you can see the checked box has the value true and the unchecked box has the value false. And we can use these values in a range of things, including adding up how many chores are done each day with count if. I'm going to count this range if the value is true. Those parentheses, let's copy that across for the rest of the week, make them bold, and we'll call this chore count. We can also visualize their efforts with some conditional formatting. I'll start by summing the chores for each day. Holding down control, just select each column for Connor. Press enter. Let's copy that formula for Finn. And then I'm just going to control X to cut it out and we'll place it down here. So we've got the counts, but it would look better as a bar. Let's add conditional formatting data bars in solid fill. And then I'm just going to go in and edit the rule under manage rules, and then double click the rule here to open the edit formatting rule dialog box. I'm going to show the bar only. Under maximum, it's set to automatic, but the most chores one child can do in a week is 84. So we'll set that to the maximum. And the color for Connor is red, click OK and OK. And then let's go back in and manage rules. And I'm just going to duplicate this rule and apply it to the cell D4 and then double click to edit it. And we'll just change the color of this one to Finn's color blue, click OK and OK. And now as they do more chores, you'll see the bars grow and hopefully some friendly competition will motivate them to do more than the other. I can dream. If you want more practical ways to use checkboxes, check out my comprehensive video. You'll find the link here and in the video description. When Copilot first came out, it was pretty limited and it would only work with data in Excel tables. Not to mention, it would often take longer to write the prompt than to actually complete the task, assuming you knew how. But it's improving all the time. So let me show you some new ways we can use Copilot and have Excel do the work for you. Here I have a list of employees and workshop topics. You'll notice some employees have multiple workshops listed, so it's difficult to visualize. And notice the data is not formatted in an Excel table. On the Home tab, I'm going to open Copilot. It opens in a task pane. I'm just going to left click and drag it out so it's closer to the data. I'm going to ask Copilot to create new columns for each of the five types of workshop topics in the Workshop Topics column, and flag with Y if the person in the Name column is attending. Let's see how it goes. So you can see it's drafted a solution. It's started by identifying the different workshops and you can see it's written a formula for each one. And if I just move it across here, we've got a preview of what it's proposing. If I hover over the insert columns button, you can see in the worksheet behind the results it looks pretty good. Let's click insert columns and just like that, it's inserted five separate formulas to populate the data. Now it'd be good to also have a count for each workshop. So let's ask Copilot to do that next. 
Add a formula to each of the five workshop topic columns to count how many people are attending. Let's see how it manages with that. It's given me a preview here and that looks great. Let's just hover over insert row. We can see it behind. Let's go ahead with that. And now we have totals. It's also given the total row a label and it's made them bold, which are nice extra touches I didn't ask for. If you saw Copilot in the early days, I think you'll agree this capability is a significant improvement. Copilot's available to 365 users at an additional cost. Next, let's talk about Excel's scan function, a tool that's transforming the way we handle running totals and dynamic calculations. The old way to calculate a running total is with the sum function. We sum this cell here to this cell initially, and we press F4 to lock the reference on the first cell. And then as we copy down, this is going to increment from C5 to C6, C7, and so on. Let's press enter and double click to copy it down. So if we edit this cell, you can see it's now picking up the next row as it moves down the column, which is great. However, it's populated these empty rows with a running total. Now, if you didn't want that, you could delete them. But then when you enter new data, let's enter some values for August. I'd have to go in here and manually left click and drag to copy it down, which is a pain. Whereas the new way to write a running total formula is with the scan function. The first argument is the initial value which I'll start at zero. And then the array is the range of cells I want to add up. And then the function is a lambda. And we start by defining names for our initial value and our array. So I'm going to call the initial value i and the values v. And then for the calculation, I need to handle these blank rows. So we're going to use if v is not blank, then add i plus v, otherwise return blank. Close if close lambda, close scan, press enter, and it spills the results. And what's nice about this is when I add in my value for September, it automatically continues the running total, which I think you'll agree is a very nice solution. If you're finding these Excel tricks useful, you'll love my Excel expert course. It's designed to fast track you through everything from foundational skills to the advanced techniques that make a real difference in your work. Each lesson's bite-sized and packed with examples you can actually use so you'll build confidence fast. And it comes with support and mentoring from me personally. You'll find the link in the video description or pinned comment. Last year, Excel introduced Trim Range, a powerful new function designed to make managing dynamic ranges easier than ever. Think of it as a smarter version of traditional dynamic named ranges we used to create with functions like offset and index. If we look at the previous scan example, you can see that scan is actually returning results right down to row 17, as denoted by the blue border. This is because we're referencing extra rows in the array argument to allow for new months to be added and automatically included. And the lambda returns a blank if the value is blank, which is why you don't see any values in these cells here. But the blue border on the spilled range shows the size of the array being returned. However, with trim range, we can simplify this formula, making it more efficient for Excel to calculate and prevent it returning blanks where we don't have sales values. First, to illustrate trim range, I'll enter it here on its own. The range will be my values here allowing for growth, comma. And then the row trim mode, I want to trim trailing empty rows. That's two, close parentheses on trim range. And you can see it spills the results for the rows that contain values. So we can use that with scan. Let's wrap scan around it. The initial value is zero. The array, I'm going to use trim range to return it. And then for the function, because we don't need to ignore empty rows, we can simply place sum in this argument, close parentheses on scan, press enter, and you'll notice it spills the results for the rows where we have sales values, giving me a nice clean running total without any redundant empty rows. And if I add new data, you can see it automatically grows to include it. With the introduction of trim range, we also got a new shorthand for trimming empty rows. So instead of using the trim range function, we can simplify it. Let's copy this formula and we'll edit it. Getting rid of trim range, comma two, and the closing parentheses. To trim trailing empty rows, simply place a dot after the colon operator, press enter. We get the same result, but you can see the formula is much shorter. By the way, you can also replace sum here with average, 
or Macs, etc. So try those out for homework. I'm sure you're keen to try these out, but first there's more to the trim range and trim ref dot operator that I cover in my comprehensive video link to here and in the video description. I should also point out that at the time of recording, trim range is only available to users on the 365 beta channel. So if you don't see it, that might be why. Navigating large spreadsheets can sometimes feel like trying to read across a maze of rows and columns. Excel's new focus cell feature is here to make that a thing of the past. You can activate focus cell on the view tab of the ribbon, focus cell. It highlights the row or column of your active cell in a color of your choice, giving you a clear visual guide to easily locate your data. You can customize the color from the drop down, focus cell color. Let's choose blue. And if you click on the drop down again, we've got show auto highlight. And with this checked, when you use the find dialog box with control F, Let's find Velo. It will automatically display the focus cell for the cell containing the found value. The other new features that arrived in Excel last year are Python and regex functions. Being quite specialized topics, I won't cover them here, but you'll find links to my comprehensive videos on those features in the video description so you can check them out. Now, if you're looking to save even more time in Excel, here's a video on self-updating spreadsheets that you should check out next. It covers some game-changing tricks for automating updates in your files and reports. I think you'll find it super helpful, so take a look and I'll see you there.